Hi guys, so what I thought we'd do today is do a takedown and cleaning maintenance video of the Cold Steel Recon 1. This is the regular size with the 4 inch plain, plain edge uh, clip point blade. I'll be doing a review on this pretty soon. But uh, yeah. So I'm using this Home Depot brand HDX multi bit set. Um, if you're using some quality uh, quality Torx bit or Torx driver, I'm pretty sure you'll do just fine with the T8. But for this cheaper, uh, for this set, um, the T8 doesn't doesn't catch, so I have to use the T9. So I'm gonna be using the T9 for the pivot screw. Came with some blue Loctite from the uh, from the factory. Use the T9. Some of you, if you got good sets, you'll be able to do the T8. Then I'm using the T6 for the body screws. And these body screws are going to come with Loctite on them also from the factory. Now we're going to take off these three screws that come where you could put the pocket, kit, pocket clip for the left hand. And all these screws are coming with blue Loctite on them straight from the factory. This is going to be the third time I've taken this down. First time when I got it, I just took it down, just look at it, check it out. Then the next time I actually did some maintenance. Now when I open it, it's making a squeaky noise and then I take it apart and I just put some lubricant on it and that remedies that. So this is where, what we're looking like with the scale open. You have this very thin nylon washer, bushing, whatever you want to call it. That rides between the phosphorus bronze and the G10 scale. Here's the stop pin. So that would, that's, um, that's what really helps out the triad lock, this stop pin right here. As you pretty much know if you're into knives. But um enough about the anatomy of that. This that's just this is just what it looks like when you open it. This is how it operates. And this knife still operates plenty fi pretty fine with the scale off. It locks up perfectly. Okay. Take that off. Sorry for the camera movement. My dog's playing around. So then as you can see, we have another one of those nylon bushings, washers, whatever you want to call them. Then on each side of the blade we have a phosphorus bronze bushing. If you want to take safety to the next level, you could tape your blade before you do this. Here's the back lock spring. When you're reassembling this, you're going to put it back in with the curved portion facing down and the end of it angled up so that's what gives you that spring tension of yeah so pretty much that's it pretty much taken down you get a few pieces and then if you really want to take it completely down you'll take you'll take down the other side, take the screws off it. You could take out the pivot and the pivot assembly right here. Um, 
We'll do that. One thing to note. Okay, guys. Um, after that fail, the this part that fell through is literally r right next to my hand. I was like looking underneath this TV stand table, and then I was kind of looking underneath the couch at the same time, and this was right in front of my face. So, yeah. But um, this isn't com so. If you completely strip this down, um, this is going in only one way. I was playing around with the camera. I don't know if you can see it, but it's flat on one side. It's more easier for you to notice that this is flat on one side, as you can see through the pivot hole. On this side, it's flat, whereas the rest of it is a circle. So if you're completely stripping it down, you're gonna re and you're gonna put it in like that. So just know that this is only gonna go in one way. That's that. One thing that I do not know is this little metal pin that's in here. Okay. This little metal pin. I just don't know what that is. Um, it's, it came out on the other side of the scale. There's a hole for it right here. If anyone knows what that, knows what that is, just leave a comment for it in, uh, down below. Because I literally have no idea what that is. I mean, it came out. And so I just put it right here because that hole was like right on the other side of that one. All it does is rattle around the knife. I haven't seen any performance change from when I first got it and started playing around with it to it being right there. So now we're just, I'm just going to wipe down stuff. I'm just, this is some oil. I think it's mineral oil. It came with like a... I'm not sure what oil it is, to be honest with you. It came with a bait casting uh, fishing reel. But I just go around, wipe everything down that contacts the moving parts. And you can wipe these down with a rag too first if you want. though it's not necessary. If you want to go the extra mile, you like totally want to clean it out. You can do that, wipe everything down. And if you got like tape grime or whatever grime on your knife, you could strip this down, wash it in the sink with like some just soap. Now I'm wiping the sides, you don't need to do that, I was just doing that and just see if anything's coming off. There's not really much that's coming off, it's really just like on the center part where everything's contacting each other, paint's wearing off. Back lock spring right here. This doesn't need lubrication at all but I just wipe it down and clean it down just just because I'm already cleaning the knife anyways if you want to speed this up yourself you could use like say a cotton ball which would be way more faster because you could like get the screws and other stuff and just completely clean them off way faster than you can with the Q-tip. So we got one of these 
nylon bushings, washers, again, whatever you want to call them. Clean. This one belongs to this scale. After you use it, it's going to like sort of like curve in. So like the side that's bulged out, that's going to be contacting the scale and the side that's curving in, that's going to be where your phosphorus bonds bushing is going to go in. So, so let's look at the, the blade in those bushings. And you can use whatever oil you want. You can use gun oil, ram oil, 3-1 oil, mineral oil, whatever oil you want to use. If you're going to be using your knives for food prep or anything like that, you're going to want to use mineral oil because it's food safe. You could get that from your pharmacy in like the laxative section. If you don't plan on using your knives for food or anything like that, you could go ahead and just do whatever oil you want. Some people even said that they've used, uh, what was that? They said they've used uh, like Vaseline on it. I mean, if it'll lubricate it and you don't mind it getting loose in your pocket or whatever, Go ahead. And you're going to want to like pay attention to what side was actually contacting the blade. Because after you use this, say for like a month or two, and it's already broken in, it's really like working smooth. And you could thumb flick it like with your fingernail instead of using your thumb pad. You're not going to want to restart that break-in process all over again. So you're, you might want to be mindful of... what side was which on your scales I mean on your washers and your blade mine still has a little bit of lubricant left over but it was squeaking so I decided to take it down and you don't need to worry really about like if you mix these up, well, yeah you do, because the pocket clip, the pocket clip ones are a tiny bit smaller than it, I thought they were the same size to be honest with you right now, I never actually looked at them in depth until I just looked at them right now, but uh, yeah, I use a plate because it's um, it's white and these screws are black so it's very good contrast if you have one of those magnetic ashtray things that you get at like say Craigans, O'Reilly's or whatever auto store you have near you you can use that which will be a safe place to put all the screws and internal parts of whatever knife you're taking down because you don't want to have to like start fishing on the floor looking for them hoping you find them and some companies won't want to send you screws. They're going to be like, why'd you even take it apart? It voids your warranty. If you got a Kershaw, I mean, if you lose a couple of screws, that's okay. Just email them. They'll be happy to help you out and send you some screws. Think of a SOG that I've seen. They don't care if you take apart the knife. If you can't get it apart, they'll charge you 15 15 or 20 or 30 bucks. They'll charge you some amount to put it back together. So you can literally field strip it all the way down and they'll be happy to put it back together for you for a nominal fee. And you don't need to lubricate this area right here. I just do. Okay, so once everything's oh, jump in the gun real quick, get this floss, this uh, nylon bushing right here. And 
and a lot of times there's going to be like little black particles. You could just get those off just by wiping your fingers on them. Get them off. Okay. So we clean it off. We got a fair amount of gunk off of it. Paint wearing off, dirt, whatever. Whatever's riding around in your pocket. Okay, now what? A little bit of particles on there. I mean, that you don't even need to do, really do that, but I mean, if you're interested, you could do that. Okay. So, let's start putting it back together. bushing washer goes back on the way that we got it so we don't have to restart the breaking in process stop pin you don't need to put that in first but I just do it anyways back lock and when I start putting these things back together I do put a fair amount of lubricant on them Is that a lot of lubricant I just put put on? Yes, it is. Does it need that much? No. Does it matter all that much if you put a little bit more than needed? Not really. This thing is not going to start sweating in your pot. This thing is not going to start leaking in your pocket like you have a water balloon that just blew up in your pocket that was just putting some lubricant inside so we got our back lock on there with the spring so now it'll work properly Now we got our blade on there. Working. that bushing on and again I'm putting a lot I'm just soaking it on there why I don't know why I just do it just for the heck of it Okay, now that we have the, the innards all completely put back together, just snap it together, and then put our screws back in. They already got some Loctite in, on them, but if you want to put your own Loctite, you can take that Loctite off that's already on there and put your own. However, in the, in the few times that I've already taken this thing down, this thing will hold itself into whatever position you put it in. So if, when you get it centered, it's not going to go off centered noticeably. I mean, it's not going to go all the way to one scale when you put it back together and you don't put your own Loctite in it or whatever. And we're using a T6 to use these screws again.
Then we're going to switch over to our, in my case, a T9. In your case, if you have a better quality set, you'll use a T8. And then you'll start playing with it, see where you want your tension at. Now, I'm happy because I don't hear no more squeaking. Right now it's a little bit off center. Slightly off-centered, but for the most part, at least it's not hitting a scale. It's more off-centered to presentation side where it says Recon 1 on mine, but yeah. So now that we got it all taken apart, cleaned up, put it back together, we're not hearing any more squeaking noises. Um, it ranges from like a like a nails on chalkboard, low, low squeaking screech noise all the way to if you let it get further and you don't take it apart and lubricate and clean it up, it gets to like sort of like an owl screech, it gets to like a loud like screech, like yeah. So um, normally when you start hearing it screeching when you're like opening it and closing it, like right about here you're gonna hear that screeching you may want to just take it apart and clean that up and remedy that. But yep, when you do do that, take it apart, lubricate it, it runs perfectly, nice and smooth, no complaints. Thanks for tuning in and watching this uh, field stripping video, uh, maintenance, takedown. Alright, thanks for stopping by, have a good day.